Hello, 8th graders. It's Miss Enfield here, and today we're going to do lesson 3.4, which is reasoning about the pod's motion. So like always, we're going to start with our warm-up. I will go over it briefly, so if you guys haven't done it yet, you can go ahead and pause the video, or you can have me walk you through it. So here we have another message from Anna Gonzalez, and it's to you guys, the student physicists. It's about our pod and space station data. You've done excellent work in investigating how collisions affect different objects, and we're looking forward to your final report. In case, or in case you might find the following helpful for comparing the speed of the pod and the space station after its collision. So the, we know the pod weighs 1,100 kilograms, or 1,100 kilograms, and the space station almost weighs half a million kilograms. That's a lot. So regards, Anna, Dr. Gonzalez, Program Scientist, Asteroid Collection Mission. So how can we use this information that she sent us to compare the speeds of the pod and the space station after the collision? That's what you guys are going to answer down here. So the question after our message from Dr. Gonzalez says, how can you use this information about mass to help you compare the speed of the pod after the collision to the speed of the space station after collision. So maybe think back to one of our last lessons. You guys might remember we had our little comic with our potato guys, our egg guys, whatever you guys want to call them. But Sherman was trying to figure out what mass has to do with speed. Here's our comic. Maybe it will help jog your guys' memory. But it says, actually, Sherman, the forces in a collision are equal. The effects are different because... So what did you guys answer for this? What makes you think that the effects of the collision are different, but the forces are the same? So maybe you remember something along the lines from what we've learned that mass affects velocity. So that's going to affect collision stuff. So something that is lighter is going to have a greater change in velocity. So something like our space pod when it runs into the space station. Our space pod might have a greater change in velocity than what our space station is going to experience. So again, if you guys haven't answered the warm-up, go ahead and pause the video and complete that. And if you have answered the warm-up, then we're going to move on to activity number two, which is introducing the reasoning tool. So remember, you will be making a final report to the space agency. The report will provide a complete explanation of what happens to the pod during the seconds that communication was lost and after the, after the collision. So let's review the parts of a report. So here's kind of an outline for the report that we're going to make for Dr. Gonzalez. Part 1 says explain those missing seconds. So if you guys remember the video we watched right at the beginning of this unit, that showed our space station, the video cutting out for a second, and then we didn't see what happened next. So that's going to be what part one is. You're going to explain those missing seconds, what happened that caused the pod to collide with the space station. And then for part two, you're going to use evidence to argue for the claim that best describes how the pod and space station are moving after the crash. So here we have three different claims that you guys can choose from, and I'll go over them with you. Claim 1 says the pod is moving faster than the space station. Claim 2 says the pod and space station are moving at the same speed. And claim 3 says the pod is moving more slowly than the space station. So the second part, this whole part 2, is focused on comparing the motion of the pod to the space station after the collision. So maybe use what you know about how mass would affect the velocities after the collision to choose a claim. So which claim do you think you're going to choose? So now we're going to look at our evidence um, reasoning tool. So evidence and the process of reasoning are parts of developing scientific arguments that answer questions about the natural world. So you guys might recognize this chart, but it shows how we have our question, we have our claim, and then we support our claim with evidence 
and we use reasoning to tie our evidence into our claim. We're not just going to list random pieces of evidence and say that it supports our claim. We have to explain how our evidence is important to our claim. So reasoning is a process of explaining how evidence supports or maybe doesn't support a claim. All right, so here's a reasoning tool that's going to help you guys explain why your evidence is important. So here we have a piece of evidence, evidence A, and it says the thruster force was the same strength as other missions and it was exerted in the opposite direction. So that's our evidence, and we're going to say why this matters. And before we say why it matters, we're going to look at the therefore. So it's going to tell us what our claim is. So here's supporting claim number two, which says the thrusters only slowed the pod. It didn't stop. The pod hit the space station, which made it bounce and move in the opposite direction. So how can we tie our evidence right here in? How can we explain it to support our claim? I'll let you guys go ahead and pause the video and fill that out real quick. All right, so if you guys have filled this out already, I'll go over what information I have for you. So it has the same size force means that there was something different about the pod. The same size force on objects with different mass would have caused, would cause the objects to have different changes in velocity. So we know that there was the same amount of force as every other time. So it wasn't the amount of force that changed the velocity velocity it must have been something else about the pod so now we're going to look at our evidence b it says the pod the pod's mass was 1100 kilograms which is 130 kilograms more than usual and it supports this claim the thrusters only slowed the pod it didn't stop the pod hit the space station which made it bounce and move in the opposite direction so we know this pod had more mass than normal more mass. So this could cause the thrusters to not slow it down as much. So the pod had more mass, causing the thrusters to only slow the pod's velocity, not quite stop it. So if you guys haven't finished this, go ahead and finish our reasoning tool. Make sure you hit hand in. And then we're going to move on to activity number three, which is writing. Here we are for activity number three. Next, you guys are going to do some reasoning about the pod. So if you look down here at this chart, it lists our three claims again. I went over these earlier. And then we have a reasoning tool, just like in activity two, like what I went through with you guys. So for our reasoning tool, we have our evidence, and our evidence is talking about the mass of the pod and the mass of the space station. So here we have the mass of the pod. We know it's a lot smaller compared to the mass of the space station. And we also know that the mass of the pod was about 130 kilograms more than it normally is. So why does the mass of the pod and the mass of the space station matter? What do you guys think? So you guys are going to pick a claim from up here. Be claim one, saying the pod is moving faster than the space station after they collide. The pod is in the space station are moving at the same speed after they collide, and the pod is moving more slowly than the space station. So go ahead and choose a claim. I would put your claim right here, whichever one you choose, and then try and explain how this evidence supports your claim in the this matters column. So go ahead and pause the video and complete this activity and then come back to me once you're done. All right, so for activity four, you're gonna be modeling the pod's collision using this modeling tool right here. So before we click on the modeling tool, we are going to look at our goal. So our goal is to model the forces exerted when this pod and the space station collided. Show how the velocity of each object changed as a result of the collision. You want to show the locations of the pod and the station during and after the collision. You want to show the strength of the forces exerted on each object during the collision. And then you want to show the final velocities. All right, here's what your guys' modeling tool looks like. So as you can see, 
we have our before force, and we have two different sized objects. So we have our space pod right here as B, and our space station here as C. We know that C weighs a lot more than the, than the space pod. So this is our space station. So what do you guys think happens when they collide? What do we know about the forces exerted on two different objects when they collide? And then what do we know or what do you think is going to happen after they both collide? So make sure that you guys are showing the correct weighted objects. So we're going to be using medium and large for our space pod and our space station. And you want to show our forces using these pink arrows and our velocity using these blue lines right here. Let's go ahead and complete this activity. Hit hand in once you're done and then come back to my video. Guys, it's time for our last activity of the day, which is going to be activity number five, our homework. So you guys are going to write an explanation that summarizes what happened in the missing minutes and what they know about the pod speed. So you're going to be using what we did today, using our reasoning tool to figure out what evidence we could use to help explain our claim. And then we also did a modeling tool to kind of show what happened when the two objects collided. So now you guys are going to explain what happened when our video cut out. And here we have a word bank, just like all of our other writing activities. So this, it, these are all vocab words that you guys have learned and they should be in your OneNote. And you guys always have your cause and effect word relationship phrases to look at, which can be really helpful when trying to write an argument. So you're going to come here and you're going to answer this first question, which is part one. What happened to the pod during those seconds when communication was lost? So what do you think happened to the pod when the communication was lost? We saw the pod going in to dock at the station, the video cut out, and the next thing we saw the pod was moving in the opposite direction. It didn't dock like it was supposed to. And then for part two, you're going to answer after the collision, how does the pod's motion compare to the motion of the space station? So we know the pod is moving backwards. So something happened to the space station too. What do you guys think is happening to our space station? Did it stay there? Did it stay in the same spot in space? Or did it get some sort of effect from the pod hitting it from the collision? So go ahead and answer these two questions. Once you're done, make sure you hit hand in. And that's going to be all for today. So thank you guys for listening and have a wonderful rest of your day. Make sure to let Ms. Crawford or I know if you have any questions at all about this assignment.